Hello. Today we're going to work on repairing a Sony Handycam DCR SR65. In my case, I needed to repair the flex cable that goes to the LCD. However, since I essentially fully disassembled this device, this could allow you to do several different things, including replacing the flex cable, replacing the LCD, replacing or upgrading the hard drive, or replacing other cables within the uh, device. You may also find that these instructions will help you with any other types of Sony Handycams. So let's get started. First let's go over what tools you'll need to have at your disposal. You need a small Phillips screwdriver, a small slotted screwdriver, a tweezers, a toothpick, a magnifying glass or a head loop, and finally a bit of Elmer's glue and rubber cement. The Elmer's glue is used to uh, glue down some of the cable pieces that you'll find you'll need to reaffix once you do your reassembly, but you use a very tiny amount. And last but not least, I included some step markers throughout the video just to give a place for you to track your progress as you go along through dis, uh, disassembly and then secondly um, you'll be able to use those same markers to go backwards for reassembly okay so here we have a Sony uh, DCR SR65 camcorder and I'm going to repair the flex cable, this sucker right here. Um, so, if you're having a problem, and I'll demonstrate if you can see the screen, you'll notice that right now it is displaying without a problem. So right now you can see that the screen is, is working. Zoom in and out. Okay, but as soon as I go to turn it, can you see how the screen is whiting out <clears throat> and sometimes it'll actually cut out completely until you move it again. So when you're trying to see what it is that you're filming, it um, can be tricky. Um, now, this camera doesn't have a uh, viewfinder, so it's especially difficult. So, um, we're going to fix that. First thing we'll do is shut it off. And remove the battery. Now, there's some pretty small screws that it uses, so I'm using an appropriately small screwdriver. We'll flip it over here. And open it up. And we zoom in a little bit more. see that there are several screws, one here, one here, and then you'll also need to remove this screw and this screw. So we'll start with those four. And they are very small hard to deal with and don't lose them then you'll need to locate the screws very close to the uh, viewfinder itself Let's see if we can see those for you
looking at that screw there and that screw there and we'll remove those. Okay, to jump ahead a little bit, I want to try and point out all the different screws that you have to take out. So we'll look down here again on the bottom. And there's one, two, three, four. Okay. And then tucked away up here behind this strap is another one. Right there. And inside the AVR port, there's another one right there. There's one in the battery case. Uh, let's see, there's one up here where the SD card goes and one where the hot shoe is. And of course, back to these two here. All in all, that's a total of 14 screws. All right then, once all the screws are out, we'll start with this small piece right here. And if you gently take one of these edges Right there, you can see that I went to the back and pushed it forward, slid out a little bit, and then you can pull that off, that piece right there. After you have that small piece removed, you can go to the bottom and pry on this and you'll notice it's gotten loose by this point and pull that off and incidentally there's the hard drive in case you ever need to upgrade it or replace it and then go back to the bottom again and this piece should remove very easily these two pieces off. Next we'll pull out the hard drive to get better access to the following pieces. So to do that we'll pull this out, kind of like peel off the rubber. And if I can get you a close-up here, we'll show you the connector. And we'll take our screwdriver. And you see that pop up? That'll release the clamp allow us to pull the cable out. Just remember your orientation or you can um, look at the video again but uh, you'll also notice there's a missing pin on the flex cable to kind of help you orient how it'll go back in. Now there's five more screws to remove. One here one here, one here, one here, and one here. The 
next screw to remove is right here. And if I didn't mention it before, <coughs> handy tool number one, handy tool number two for removing these tiny screws. And then you very gently want to remove this piece here. Just wiggle it until you start to feel it come out. A very good friend of mine taught me when I was very young if it doesn't go easy, something's wrong. So we're gonna check this a little closer. You can feel it snagging in different spots and I just wanna gently feel those spots out. And it was that little pad that was snagging right there. Now that section is open. And you'll see down here we're starting to see this right here is the, uh, the flex cable that we're after replacing. So now we've gotten to being able to release that. So then we'll move on to the next step. So the next thing we'll do is carefully remove the front lens cover. So that's right out. Just keep an eye on your lens. We've now taken off the ability to cover it. So just watch out for the lens. And yet another screw here on top of the microphone holder. Screw that. And to make our lives a little easier, get some of this stuff out of the way, you can gently, gently pull and this connector, wiggle it a little bit, back and forth. Pulls out. <clears throat> and around the back here, another screw. Tucked away inside here, another screw. screw right there <clears throat> then the next piece we want to take off is this silver guard right here just take this one piece right here a little tricky. You need some help but with the screwdriver, but just be gentle.
next we'll and next we'll take off this top cover by sliding the SD cover back and this will just pull right off like that next are these two screws one right here and one right there And from there, <coughs> the viewfinder will come off, and you get access to the flex cable finally. And next, we'll turn the pivot slightly off center so that we can get access to the two screws for the LCD. One there, and one there. Next, we'll remove the inside cover. here with an alignment pin that can pick up hopefully. Then we'll flip up the clamp on this cable right here so that we can remove that ribbon cable. Which will then finish removing the front cover and the center unit is now separated and set that aside so that we can stop putting our thumbprints on the lens. Next we'll remove this piece of thermal tape right here. four screws on this board. We'll remove those. Then that reveals this ribbon cable in the back. And that one, if you just wiggle it out, Now you've got <coughs> the LCD separated from the board, finally. So we'll set this piece aside. This obviously is also helpful if you're needing to replace a broken LCD. All right, so this piece, the cover just snaps off, so you have to do a little bit of gentle prying. Find an edge, for instance, right here. And it'll just go down the edge. to the 
other side. Do the same thing. Until it pops out. Then we'll remove the clamp for this piece, the other end of the ribbon cable. Okay, so then we're going to take this little silver cover off. And if you look really closely, I'll try and get in here for you a little bit more. There's a tiny little flap right here. And if you get under it with the screwdriver, Okay, so there's actually four clips on this thing, which would make sense. One for each corner. And then once you get those clips popped up, you can pull this off. It is a little tricky. You don't want to break it because it's very small. As you can see. And then the top piece will also come off. Okay, we'll kind of unthread the cable. At this point, if you turn the pivot completely around, it'll let you pull that part right off. And then we can set this baby aside. And you can finally see the full extent of the cable that we're trying to replace. So the corner of this cable is glued in there. So if you just wiggle it, the glue will eventually come loose and you'll be able to pull this out. And there we are. Finally have it separated. So, 31, approximately 31 screws later, and you've got all these parts, and you've finally reached your objective, which is to get to the, uh, to get to the flex cable. Um, now, I'm not sure if there was an easier way to get quicker to the objective without breaking something, um, but... I wanted to make sure that that of course I didn't break anything and <clears throat> and this was actually a good way of actually discovering if there was an easier way to get to it by making sure everything's apart but again you know if there's other pieces you need to replace then you're all the way to that point So the last step before we start going backwards and reassembling is to prepare the new cable. Now if you look at it, um, at first glance it doesn't seem to be the same cable, but it is. Um, it's just that it's folded over here at the center. So you'll see where... see the two glue patches right here and what 
we'll do is we'll fold it over according to the way the old one was and then use that piece of tape to fix it just like the new one. Now, I would have liked to have been able to show you this more than once, but um, it took me a second to figure it out, but I can tell you that the trick to it is this corner right here. Basically, if you take your old one apart, you can kind of get an idea of how the little sticker pieces that I pointed out before are pasted together on their respective corners. But try and zoom in here a little bit and show you again that this corner right here if you start by getting that into position that's the easiest one to flip around and uh, tape on itself then what you do is you work your way down to the other sides there's another sticker right here and that a lot that basically almost molds itself into position as you go kind of see right there there's another sticker right there there's an, another sticker that I pointed out earlier and then up here there's also one towards the middle and again as you move away from this first corner it basically <coughs> kind of works its own way to where you have to fold it over so really was once I figured it out it was not as hard as I thought it might might have been and there you have it it's completely back together as we mentioned at the beginning of the video um, all you have to do to put it back together is follow the steps in reverse and um, a couple of things just to prove to you that I actually did um, fix it and this isn't some trickery there are the two screws that are inevitably left over not critical and let's power it on and where before we had all kinds of craziness when we would pivot the screen is staying as it should And there you have it.